Action Unit, and our unit works with the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office, and we work on consumer complaints that are filed with the Attorney General's Office from people in Hadley and across Hampshire, Franklin, and parts of Worcester County. And we also do a lot of educational programs. So usually we partner with Rachel Senecal, who's your triad outreach um, person in our office. Um, and we also take lots of calls. So if you ever have a question about a consumer issue or where to turn with a problem, please feel free to give us a call. And this is my colleague. I'm Joanna Donahue, uh, case coordinator. <clears throat> and I work out of the York Hampton office. And I work out of Green. All right, good afternoon. My name is uh, Deshaun Brown. I'm a trooper with the Massachusetts State Police. And my primary role with the Massachusetts State Police is a community police liaison. So uh, we assembled this great team of knowledgeable people from all over our, our area here, from the Hadley Police Department and the Northwestern District Attorney's Office, to put this uh, program together to give you some tips of, of what we might be seeing and how to protect yourself and what happens if you are successfully scanned. So I hope you get something out of it today. And also, uh, this is a dual event today. This is a scam awareness uh, presentation and also a coffee with a cop. So we look forward to, uh, to uh, presenting this and then answering any questions you might have about both scam awareness and uh, law enforcement. Thank you. Um, I'm Officer Janelle Seitz. Uh, well, I recognize a lot of your faces. I'm sure you recognize me. I've been with Hadley. This is my sixth year. Um, I'm big into the community uh, type activities within the town and getting to know each and one of you. So if you do have an issue and you call, you might see my face and I'm a familiar face for you. And um, as everybody knows me, I'm here at almost all the copies of the cops. I also am a Hadley resident. Well, not anymore, but I'm Warren Trombley. I am Chief Mason's Administrative Assistant. Um, I do everything that I'm told. I also just that <laughs> one. And um, I love doing community outreach, especially doing it with um, seniors, because a lot of the times you guys are our most vulnerable population, and we want to keep you guys nice and safe. Um, so I really love doing all of these events, and it's nice to see everybody here. I don't know about this microphone. Did, did, was anybody able to, able to hear me without it? Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I hear you better with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but you don't have to hold it. Just clip somewhere. If you're in the water. Yeah. I'm definitely going to forget that it's there, so. Yep, that amplifies you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So without further ado, we're going to get started first with a scam awareness presentation. Alright, so there's going to be three types of scans that you're going to primarily see out there. Um, there's going to be a phone scam, a computer scam, or a mail scam. These are the type of methods scammers will uh, most likely use when they go to take your, your money. All right, and what do criminals want? What are they looking for? I hate this microphone, I'm not gonna lie to you. But I'm gonna use it. <laughs> I just hate hearing my voice so much. <laughs> okay, um, what do criminals want? They want, uh, they want your money and they want it easy. They don't want to work for it. And uh, like uh, one of our colleagues said last time I did this, they said, this is the best way to, to get our money is scamming now because nobody's robbing banks, nobody's robbing locomotives anymore. This is the easiest way to do it. They can just sit from behind their computer and ask you to send them money in, in any other ways they're scamming nowadays. So these are the type of methods you're going to see. These are the type of payments you're going to ask for. I'm sorry. Yeah. These are the type of payments you're going to ask for. They're going to ask for gift cards, prepaid cards, they're going to ask you to wire money, they're going to ask you to send cash, or Bitcoin, or cyber currency. Why? Because once it's out of your hands, it's gone, and it's hard to get back, and often it's hard to track as well. With prepaid cards, they'll have you buy the card, read the number off the back, and then it's gone. With money wiring, once the money transfer takes place, it's difficult to get that back. With cash, be cognizant with them asking you to put cash in stuff like magazines or phone books 
so it can, so it's not easily scanned when it goes through um, a scam. And with cyber currency or Bitcoin payments, it's becoming very common. I'm not going to try to talk to you about that stuff because I don't understand it myself. <laughs> but I'm ask you about yeah, it's becoming more common. It's very difficult to get that money back. Uh, there are actually Bitcoin machines in this area where you can put money in and transfer Bitcoin. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's not just over the internet, it's almost like an, AT an ATM. Well, it's all over the web. Yeah, so if you hear Bitcoin, yeah, it's just beware. So when when you get a phone call and somebody I don't know how many people has have received a phone call from somebody that wants your social security number, your date of birth, your phone number, your bank account information. If somebody calls requests this information, they don't know you. They, if they want you to confirm, oh, can you confirm your social security number for me? You're not confirming anything. All you're doing is giving them your information, and then they are going to scam you. They're going to try and take out a loan against your name. They're going to try and open a bank account. They're going to do whatever they can to buy stuff using your identity, your money, and a lot of the times it can't be tracked. Um, so the big things, social security number. Never give out your social security number to anybody. If somebody gives you a call and you do not know who it is, hang up. Don't even talk to them, because the more you talk to them, the more likely you are to give them some sort of information. If you don't feel safe, call the police station. We can send a unit down to talk to you, figure out you know, who called you, we can take down the phone number, and all that. Your date of birth, your address, your email, your phone number. They called you, they probably have your phone number, but sometimes an automated machine, and there's not actually somebody on the other end. It's a, it's a prompted, recording and they just call every number that they can trying to make contact with somebody. They even call our station. We get, we get the business line at our station rings and they want to try and scam us. So if they're doing it to us, they're going to do it to every single one of you. So, question, what you got? I've had a caller call me and say that I'm being sued. Yeah. Or something. That's that's a scam. Oh, yeah. crap. I can scare so, the crap out of you. So they're gonna. So you might get a call about you being sued, about a family member being in jail, and you need to bail them out. If your family member calls you and says I'm in jail, I need you to bail me out. Okay, that's real. Somebody on behalf of somebody is not gonna call you and say, Oh, so and so, three states away, has been locked up. They might even not even be your relative. You might not even know them. Every single one of those is a scam. I would just say one thing too. If you're being sued, lawyers really like paper. So they would send you, uh, you know, documents. You get stuff in the mail. So if somebody calls you about being sued or from the government, it's definitely a scam. They like that paper trail. They put the scare in me something like that. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the tricks that they use coming up, so. I got one one time from the IRS. Oh, yeah. They said they were the IRS, and that I can, they're just putting out warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I, yep. If, if, you, if there's a warrant out for your arrest, you're not going to be contacted by the IRS. You're going to see me. Yeah. <laughs> in person. In person. It's not going to be over the phone. Unless maybe you didn't show up for jury duty or something silly like that. Yeah. You know, we might come to your house and knock on the door and, hey, you gotta go, you gotta get this taken care of type type situation, okay? Yeah. Using a gift card, no less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the other information that they're looking for besides name, date of birth, your license number. Don't give that license number out either. The, the S number that's on your Massachusetts license, that can have access to all of your information, your address. Um, never give out your bank account information. Never even give out what bank you use. Um, your credit card information. Once these numbers are given out, they have immediate access to your funds. 
and they're going to buy whatever they can with them, and nine times out of ten, it can't be tracked. So, let's say, you know, they buy something for $500, you're going to be out $500, and I've personally never seen that money get back. It's, it's, it's once it's gone, it's gone. Um, your Medicaid, air, Medicaid no, Medicare and health insurance information. That all links to every one of your informations as well. Never give out that information. If you're going to the doctor, that's a safe place to give that information out to. Never give it out over the phone or anything like that, okay? And logins and passwords. A lot of people use the same password for everything. I know I'm guilty of it. Some of my same accounts are all the same password because it's easy to remember. So if, so if you give out your login and your password to one thing, anything else that's linked to that, they will try and figure out what accounts are linked to that email and password. Once that's out, you got to start fresh. You're going to have to get a new email. You're going to have to create a new password. It's a, it's a game of, of refresh. So the other day, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because the most times I get walk-in reports, I had two this last week, about individuals that gave out either their license number, their email, their social security number, their bank account information, and now they need all new bank accounts, new social security, or you know, they gotta call the social security office to figure out how to get that situated. And it's, it's an invasion of your privacy. Everyone that I talk to that has this issue doesn't feel safe. So to keep your guys' self safe, we just don't give it out at all. If you guys ever have any question as to if you can give out information or if you should, hang up the phone, call the station, talk to an officer, have an officer respond if we're available to come talk to you, and we can go from there. Does anybody have any questions in regards to anything that I just said. I just add to you said that sometimes you do get these calls in your office. We do. And you can you don't have the authority or the ability to kind of backtrack that call where it came from? So a lot of times it's from overseas. Mm -hmm. So a lot of they overseas. it's it, they make these little buildings overseas and there's tons and tons of people in these buildings and they're on these computers and they're pushing buttons and it's auto-dialing phone numbers and that recording comes on and once you go through the entire menu, if you stay on the phone long enough, you'll actually get to talk to a real person. And when that happens, that's when they steal your information. But a lot of times it looks like a local number. Yes, so there, there are apps that people can use on their phone. What, what you can do, so let's say I need to call any one of you um, in regards to um, an incident, um, or you know, you reported that somebody was suspicious outside your house. And I wanted to maybe talk to you a little bit further, but I'm not in the station to call you from the phone, okay? I'm not gonna call you on my personal cell phone because I don't like to give out my personal cell phone number. They make an app so that I can clone my number to show that the Hadley Police Station is calling. Okay? If Hadley Police calls your, calls your phone number, whoever you speak to is going to identify themselves and they are going to tell you that you are being recorded. Every one of our phone lines is recorded. So if you get a call say, from someone saying, oh, I'm at the Hadley Police Station, and that's all they say, that could be somebody cloning our phone number to try and get information from you. A lot of the times they will also spoof our number, so they'll display our number on your caller ID and they'll hang up. Mm -hmm. So that way you have to call back. That happened one day last year or the year before and we had over a thousand calls back to our police department <laughs> that day. Uh, we were inundated with people going, hi, you called me, I'm in Nebraska. No, we did not call you, sorry. It's someone using our phone number. And uh, that takes up a hefty chunk of our time when something like that happens, which takes away from a possible emergency call coming in. What about those calls that I've gotten calls over the past two years from Firefighters Association, Police Association, 
and you go, oh, you know, this is a legitimate request for donations. Could be scam, it could be real. Um, is it a local department that's calling you? No. Then this is scam. Mm -hmm. Any of the ones that say, sorry, Trooper Brown, this is for the State Police Trooper Association, or this is for the National Police Association for Medical Funds. If you actually read into their paperwork online, because I used to donate to all of them, um, you will see that only like 0.05% goes to whatever organization they are supporting. The rest of the money goes to a legal aid fund or the telemarketers who are calling you. Um, so the best thing if you ever want to donate to a police department or a fire department or a state trooper's facility, you want to go there in person. You can always donate cash or check and because you're doing it in person is the safest way. I know it stinks, my mom loves sending money out to all these organizations in the mail. Um, you can request it, you can do it by all means. If you get something in the mail, read through everything. Read through what they send you because it will tell you where it is going. I never ever say to give out your information over the phone. Um, say, hey, shoot me something in the mail, I'd love to see it. We um, don't currently have a police association, but our fire association will um, come to your house and pick up donations. Um, they usually have a third party uh, that will come and knock on your door in person, and you can just ask for proof. They have to show a card and paperwork showing you that they are collecting for our fire department in general. Thanks. Uh, a while back, I was uh, delayed in a flight at O'Hare in Chicago, and since I knew I was going to be there for at least an hour, I went to the little store that was right across from my gate. There was one girl working there. I bought a pocket dish and a book, and I don't usually carry much cash when I travel, so I gave her my credit card, and because I'm a little leery, I watched her run it through. And in the hour and a half that I was there, someone used $3,000 of my money. And no one could reach me. The credit card company couldn't because I went to Colorado for a week. And when I came back, they'd been trying to reach me. And they took care of the whole thing. But I was watching her. They can do it even just walking by you. They have devices um, and cell phones, and they'll walk by you, and you'll never even know. So unfortunately, even if it didn't happen from them swiping it, which you can, gas stations a lot of time will have them. They always tell you to shake the part where you put your card into. Um, so she could not have been the person who did it, but they can hack into anything. They can hack into your video monitors. Um, so, but let's, uh, save some questions for a minute so that way they can get through their part of this. <laughs> I would just add one thing. It is safer to use a credit card because remember, that's not your money. It's money you're borrowing from a bank. So if you have a problem like you did, you can dispute it with the credit card company. It, say if you had used your debit card, that's direct access to your personal bank account. And what if you needed that money to pay your bills or to buy your groceries? So um, just remember, we talk about ordering stuff online, or even if you're traveling, better to use a credit card because you do have that right to dispute because it's not your money, it belongs to that bank and they're giving you a loan. If it's out of your debit card and out of your bank account or your checking account and that money disappears and your bank's not able to help you recover it, you're out that money. So it's just something to think of on a kind of a consumer side of things. And why do scams work? Um, like you said, they pretend to be an authority figure. Um, they'll play on your emotions. Uh, they'll, you know, tell you that your, you know, your grandchild is locked up somewhere and needs money, or your, you know, son-in-law is has been kidnapped, and they will go right, you know, to your psyche, right to your emotions, and they won't give you a lot of time to think about it. Um, they'll rush you. They'll scare you. So a lot of people's first reaction is, I've got to take care of this right away. They don't give you the time to really think about it and think, okay, what's happening here? Because you want to help whoever you love that's in trouble. Um, and they say that they want to help you. Um, 
you know, we, this has happened, this incident happened, and we want to help you with it. We, want to, we really want to help you out of the situation. So they make you, you know, they, they want you to trust them. They want you to count on them to handle this fake situation that they're trying to get you into. Um, and a lot of times they will follow the headlines. Like for example, with the, you know, this recent Ukraine situation, they will get on that like wildfire and you'll get calls asking for donations to you know, Ukraine or to anybody who's collecting anything for whatever situation is happening in the current news and the current events. Um, so just please take some time, think about it before you give any information and just, you know, if, if they say your son is in jail, then I mean, you know, call your son. <laughs> and if he's not in jail, then, you know, then you know it's a scam. Uh, but just really just take your time and think about who's talking to you and, and uh, you'll be all right. Is this better? So, for example, government imposters, um, the Social Security Administration. Um, Social Security is not going to call you and ask for your Social Security number. They already know it. Um, Medicare as well. Uh, they're an authority figure. They, you know, your Medicare number is connected to everything else. Um, so, you know, if they, if you, Medicare calls you, then ask for some type of verification, or they probably won't even call you at all, right, Anita? Most likely? No. All right. Yeah. Uh, the IRS will never call you. Like we said, a lot of that goes around. They're, they're not going to call you if they need to, get a hold of you, they're going to send you a letter or contact your accountant. They're not going to call you for any information. Um, and government grants. Um, Anita, can you expand on that a little? Okay, so we did have a trend where um, there was a scam going around saying that because you are such a good taxpayer and you pay your bills and maybe you're on a fixed income, you qualify for a grant, free money from the government. Um, so that was a scam that was going around um, before, and of course, free money is never free. They're looking for your personal information. Police, sheriff, FBI, U.S. Marshals, um, as officer indicated, you know, they're, they're going to identify themselves. If the police department is calling you, you know, they, it's most likely not who they say that they are. Um, U.S. Marshals, FBI, same. I mean, any other organizations or agencies, um, they'll, they'll use anything, they'll say anything to get your attention and to scare you. So just be very careful with that as well. And the grandparent scam, I touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, callers pretend to be a grandchild in trouble, or police, or sheriff, or lawyer. Um, this happened to me, to my parents, personally, a couple of years ago. They got a call stating that I was kidnapped. They knew my name, they had my voice somehow, and my parents bolted out of the house, right down to CVS, they stayed on the phone with, with them, and they got to the, you know, right to the CVS counter to get a money order. And luckily, one of the clerks recognized it as a scam. And obviously, you know, my parents are elderly. It was the worst hour of their life, I'm sure. And the, they called me. I was at work. I was fine. So it's just, and they're smart people, but they just got into such a panic because they were hurried and they, they played on their emotions. And it was just, please be very careful of that. Um, they need money right away. Um, and don't, you know, don't tell... Don't tell your parents, you know, but, you know, uh, little Billy's in trouble, but don't, you know, don't tell anybody. That's, that's a, you know, a red flag as well. Um, call, call your son or daughter, or call Billy and find out where he is. Okay, and just hang up. I mean, don't say anything, don't push any buttons, because a lot of times if you push a button, dial one, it prompts you to the next step. So don't do that, just hang up, don't say anything. Um, and like I said, verify the information. Um, you know, if, if you're worried about your grandchild, call them, call her.
Find out where they are. Don't fall for it. Um, and by all means, don't send any money, wire money, or buy gift cards to pay. Uh, that's a clear sign that it's a scam as well. So I actually got a call from Publishers Clearinghouse a couple weeks ago. I won second prize in the Publishers Clearinghouse contest, and all I needed to do was call them back. They left a message on my machine because I always let my machine pick things up if I don't know who's calling me. So yeah, I won second prize and I needed to call them up. And this call was really tricky because it sounded like a real person. It sounded like we were just talking. You know, she was very conversational. It didn't sound like one of those robotic calls that you get that tell you to press one. It sounded like a real person. So I knew it was a scam, but it could be very tempting. And if it catches you in a moment where you might be feeling maybe a little down or you might be feeling like, you know, it might be something fun to hear more about, it, you know, you could easily fall for it. I've done a lot of research into this, um, and Publishers Clearinghouse has a lot of information about scams on their website because a lot of people have fallen for this Publishers Clearinghouse scam. So I'm going to tell you this is information directly from Publishers Clearinghouse about what to look out for. So you're going to know it's a scam if you get a phone call from them. If you have to wire money or buy a gift card, that kind of sounds familiar. Um, if you receive a check from them and you have to send a portion of it back to pay any kind of taxes or to claim the prize, um, if you deposit the check that they send you, it's going to bounce. And then you're going to be out that money in your bank account and you're also going to be out any money that you send to them to pay the prize, pay for the prize or pay the tax. So just be aware of that. Um, and also beware if someone tries to contact you in advance in any manner regarding a prize delivery. Because how do you know if Publishers Clearinghouse, if you won the great big prize, you're not going to get a call like I did. You're going to see the prize patrol. And they're going <laughs> to knock on your door or ring the doorbell and they're going to have the balloons and the big huge check and flowers and everything. They want that TV moment, right? because that makes you excited about entering the contest. So um, any um, mail that you might get or phone calls about a lottery or Publishers Clearinghouse are fake. Um, this is a computer repair scam, and I'm hoping you can hear what it sounds like because it's one of those robocalls. Like you team, your Microsoft computer has expired today, and all Microsoft services have been stopped to fix the problem. Call us back on 844-451-6555. Okay, so that's an actual robocall that I got on my cell phone, and I recorded it because I like to do things like that, so I can play it for you. Um, Okay, so we have an announcement to make. If you are the owner of a black Honda CRV, your lights are on. So you may want to go turn those off. <laughs> All right, so this computer repair scam, that was one of those robocalls. So it sounds like a robot is talking to you and asking you to call back. So when you call that number back, you're probably going to get a real person. And that real person has been trained to sell you things. And you know how salespeople are. They can be very pushy. They can be very demanding. They can put a lot of pressure on you. So they're going to try to convince you to either let them get into your computer to help you with your computer problem. They might try to sell you a program that's going to magically fix your computer. They're going to be asking for some credit card information. And most dangerous is the access to your computer. So these are all fake. I have a nephew who works in computer cybersecurity. He's one of the good guys. He helps track down these criminals. But there are the bad guys who are going to want to try to get into your computer and get that information out of there. And just know that there's nobody at Microsoft or Apple or any of the computer security companies who are watching your computer from afar. It's just not the way it works. Just know these calls are all fake. Um, but they try to trick us because I don't know how the internet works and all that stuff. 
So they're trying to bank on my lack of knowledge about that kind of thing to try to fool me to make me think that somebody's watching my computer. They're not. So these are calls, again, just hang up. And some other phone scams that are out there are maybe your utility company, your electric company, your gas company calls and says that you didn't pay your bill and you can pay it right now just using your credit card number. Not true. And if you get one of those calls, if you think, well, maybe I didn't make my payment, just go to your, your statement and look up the or look up their number in the phone book and call them directly. Also, the phony charities that we already touched on. There are going to be a lot of, the, there are always a lot of those going around. Um, some of the computer scams, um, they'll pretend you have a computer virus. You might see a screen pop up that says your computer's in trouble. Don't believe it. Phishing emails, we'll talk about that a little bit more. And just people pretending to be a family member or a friend or somebody that you trust trying to email you and try to trick you into something. And also online romance. A lot of people are meeting people online and getting tangled up in these webs. So this is a phishing email that I got. And it's called phishing because what they're doing is they're sending out that phishing line, sending out emails to lots and lots of different people, and trying to get somebody to bite. And so with this one, it was from Amazon. And it looks kind of real. It looks pretty fancy. You see the logo. It looks, it looks like it could be legitimate. And it told me that I had an hold placed on my account. And I wasn't going to be able to place any orders until I resolved it. Um, so I was supposed to click that little yellow box there to confirm my information. And then it kind of threatened me. If, if I don't do it, you're, I'm not going to be able to access my account. So I know this is a scam because they're trying to ask me for my information. So I always am very suspicious of anyone who asks me for my information. And if I had clicked on that link, I probably would have given my personal information or my account information to some kind of criminal who's trying to take advantage of me. So if that happens and you get an email like this and you suspect that maybe there's a problem with your account, you go log into your real Amazon account or you know whatever account it is. I'm not going to click on the link and I'm not going to use the telephone number that they provide me. I'm going to verify that information on my own because I know they're phishing to kind of reel me in and take my money. This is another one that I got this also from Amazon and that kind of brownish bar there says confirm my account. So they wanted me to put my account information in there. Bad news. <laughs> So if you get, how do you know if it's a real email or if it's a phishing email? Well, just know that chances are these companies aren't going to be contacting you. If there's a problem with your account, you're going to find out about it when you log into your account, if they can't process the information. Be very wary about this. Um, if you look really carefully, this one has some funny wording and stuff. They might have misspelled words. They might have odd glamour. But if you're looking at it real quickly, you might not pick up on that. Um, if you hover your mouse above the email address that it comes from, like at the top of the screen, you might see this really wacky email address. Or if you see a Gmail address or something like that, Amazon does not use Gmail. <laughs> um, and the most important thing to look out for is the link to click on. I highlighted that because that's what all these things have in common. They have a link. They have a little portal where they want you to give them your information. You need to go to the source. Go to your Amazon account. Go to your bank account, because I get these from banks, credit card companies. They're so prolific. And Anita, they, the link, even if you don't give information, but if you click on the link, you can download malware that will take yep. over your computer. Yeah, you could also end up with a computer virus from doing something like that. Or you could end up with spyware, which is where they have access to your computer and they can check out all your different accounts, but you don't know they're there. It's 
scary. So in a romance scale, the, uh, how are we all doing? Sorry, so in a romance scam, the uh, scammer will take the time to build trust with the victim and then they'll eventually convince the victim that they're in a relationship, even though they'll never meet. Every time you try to meet up with them, they'll be like, oh, I'm busy or I'm golfing or, or something. You will, they will never meet you. They will never meet you. And that'll drag on until something happens and an emergency will come up or something like that. Then they'll start asking for money. So they'll, this one, they might take their time, try to build a rapport, and after a while, then they'll, then they'll come with the, oh yeah, by the way, uh, what's, your, what's your date of birth? and your social security number and all your information. So be aware of that kind of stuff. Do you want to play the video? Sure. So we have a little video that kind of explains more about this. Looking for love in all the right places? Like popular dating sites, mobile apps, social networking sites? Ron seems like a perfect match for me. He's thoughtful. He says he can't live without you. He says he's from the U.S. but works out of the country. He says he wants to visit but says he can't afford it. He asks you to send him money. Last month it was medical bills for his sick aunt. This month he needs money to fix his car. Next month, who knows? Ron wants your money. Don't send it. The person pretending to be Ron is a scam. He'll tell you anything to get you to wear cash right away. He'll never run out of excuses. If an online love interest asks you for money, walk away, no matter how compelling the story. Report scams at ftc.gov slash imposters. I 
have your Amazon account. I handle it for you. It's not even in your name. So they will even call you about weird Amazon orders that do not exist. Um, never, ever allow remote access. As they said, the second they can get into your computer, they have access to anything, your emails, your pictures, anything you might have in your notes, your computers, anything you have in Microsoft Word, Excel. All of that is important personal information, and if it's nothing that they could get into your bank accounts, they can use that to keep talking to you and get you further along into some sort of a relationship with them, whether it be romantic or not, um, to get you to give them what they want. Um, do not pay for security scans or software scans. The only time that you're going to want to buy any sort of a security or a software scan is in person. You can buy them at Target, Walmart, Best Buy. Uh, you can buy a North Antivirus disk that you put into your computer. Um, if you can't physically buy it in person, I always advise to steer clear. I think it's my turn again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, less common are things that come through the mail, but we still have residents in Massachusetts, in Franklin, and New Hampshire County that are getting these lottery or sweepstakes packages saying that you've won. Um, also, they often come with fake checks, so look out for those. Um, you might get a charity solicitation. Maybe you haven't heard of the charity. There are ways of researching charities. Um, the Massachusetts Attorney General has a search function on their website. Um, Better Business Bureau has something called Charity Navigator. So there are ways to check out charities if you're not really sure about them and about how much money is going to be going to the actual charity. Um, sometimes they send you things about investment schemes. They've got this hot prospect and they want you to invest money in it. And it may seem like it might be from someone that you know. And also again about the government grants that you were talking about. Um, there's no such thing as free money. <laughs> I wish there was. I have two kids in college. It would help, but I'm out of luck. So just be aware of things that you get in the mail. And if there's anything you get and you're not really certain about it, you can always call one of us and we can try to go over with you and do some research to see if it really is legitimate or not. Um, so this is an example of a packet, one page of a packet that a consumer in Franklin County got, and it said it was from Mega Millions. I've heard of Mega Millions. Maybe you have too. Um, but there's a lot of fine print in there. What he had to do is call them right away and find out how to claim his prize. Um, he didn't enter the contest. How could he win a prize? You win Mega Millions by going down to the store, punching in your numbers, and getting a ticket. So, but $2 million, that's a lot of money, and it might be tempting. And they gave him all these um, really official looking documents that made it look like he could be the winner of a prize. Unfortunately, it's not true, so he, he brought the information to us, had us look it over, and we confirmed to him his, his thoughts. And he, de he, believed it was, he believed that it wasn't real, but he just wanted to run it by somebody else, and we confirmed that information for him. So it often they send you this packet, you have to call immediately to claim your prize, and you have to pay some kind of fee or taxes to claim the prize. And there was one of these letters that we got in our office that somebody had sent us, and it actually said, don't tell anyone. Let's keep it between the two of us. Another sign that it's not real. So they can be very persuasive, and if you're having a moment, it might be very tempting to make that phone call. And this is an example of a check that came with one of those packets that somebody gave us in the mail. It looks really real. And because it's a tax collector, a tax accountant, it didn't say mega millions across the top of it. You know, a bank teller, if they saw something like that, that might raise suspicion. But because they said it was from this tax collector, it might not raise the suspicion of a bank teller. And they just might deposit it in your account thinking it's something, you know, property that you owned. Um, bank tellers are really trained to try to detect frauds and scams, but it might get by them. They might not see it. And they might, you know, the person might believe that it's something real, so 
you know, who's, who's to tell the person that they can't deposit a check in their account? Um, so once you deposit the money, it becomes your responsibility and the bank may not be able to recover that money for you. <laughs> Scam warning signs. Urgency, threats, secrecy, secrecy. If you see any of these warning signs, stop. And like I said, they play on your emotions, uh, the urgency, they don't give you time to think. Um, again, they want you to keep it a secret, don't tell anybody. Um, common forms of payment, which we've covered, wired money, gift cards, cash, or Bitcoin. And the old adage, if the sounds too good to be true, <laughs> Right. Like winning the lottery or making easy money on big returns on investments. It, it is. It sounds to be too, too good to be true. It most likely is. So you're always welcome if you have a call or mail or anything that seems suspicious. Please feel free to reach out to Joanne or I. This is our contact information. Um, we also have a lot of information on our website about consumer issues. Or if you have any kind of consumer questions, please feel free to give us a call. We have a lot of informative educational materials over at the table and also some bags you can pack it up. And um, the bags have our telephone number. So please feel free to reach out to any of us to if you have any suspicions or you have any questions. Or you can call the senior center and talk to one of us and ask if you have any questions. So I just want to add um, one more thing uh, to that. Thank you so much. Very nice job. Can we get a round of applause? I just want to ask something from something that I personally do. I, I would recommend being proactive with this, um, with, with people getting your information and stuff like that. So stuff for what I do is I, I check my bank accounts and my bank statements regularly. I check my credit report regularly, at least once a month. And I have I sign up for uh, for protection um, through my bank. So it just happened to me uh, this month, actually. My bank called me. They said, hey, there's, there's a few uh, charges on your credit card. It looked pretty fishy. You want, you want to check them out? I checked them out. Somebody made eight one-cent transactions to my credit card. So they called me. They found it. Before I was able to, they called me up, and we took care of it. It took a day. It took a day. And like you said, thankfully, that was my credit card because it was their money. They care about it, and it wasn't my money. So when it's their money, they actually want it back. So I just want to add that little tip in there. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll, we'll open up to questions now. Go ahead. Uh, not a question, but a relatively scam I haven't seen recently are ads that you see on uh, coming in through the computer through various uh, means for deep discounts. Uh, I saw one for LLB where you're going to buy, you know, $500 item for $50. Yep. And, and uh, oh, yeah. what made me think about it is one that came today from Macy's, the same thing, super deep discount. And basically, if you send your credit card information to buy that thing, you're in the same scam situation. But, uh, but I agree, if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Absolutely. My husband has been wanting a red Weber grill. They don't make the color anymore, but he has a red pickup truck and they have to match. So I, over the weekend, I was on my phone and I was trying to find a red Weber grill. And I came across webergrills.com and they were all 90% off. And I was like, oh, this is great. And then I was like, wait a minute, it has two S's in Weber grills. Yep. Um, but, you know, all of the grills on that page were 90% off, so you're getting a $900 grill for pennies, you know, and a good way is just, you know, double check um, the website, the spelling, also the contact information, they won't have a phone number, um, or they won't have an address listed on their site, or they won't let you return merchandise. Um, there's there's definitely a lot of uh, unfortunate websites that are doing the same thing and they'll never send you it. Um, my wonderful husband also bought his friend a Bradford Exchange uh, item. Um, and then they kept billing his car. Um, while it's an adorable statue of Snoopy, 
Uh, we then got six in the mail, and he was charged about $700, and it's been about six months, and even I have not been able to physically speak to a single person at Bradford Exchange, which is a legitimate company, uh, to get the money back. Because he clipped some sort of box when he ordered it, um, he gave them the right to charge his card for any upcoming additions. And because of that, our bank was like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Uh, luckily on PayPal, I was able to unclick the reoccurring charges, but we're fighting to get back $700 in Snoopy statues. So, <laughs> so even though it's still a legitimate site, uh, my husband is not computer savvy um, at all. So it's been a struggle. You could order something that's real and then get duped into future orders. So you really got to be careful. He may not have clicked the box either because some of those websites have pre-checked boxes. Yeah. And you have to be the one that unchecks it before you cash out or you sign you only sign yourself up. So that might have happened to the poor guy too. I got Snoopy's if anyone likes Snoopy. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. I, I had a scam um, on my computer about four years ago, and all of a sudden my computer just red, got red. There was a big, there were bells and whistles going off. It was loud. It scared me, and it said on the screen, you know, "Microsoft wants you to call this number to fix this problem. Somebody's trying to attack your IP address." What does that mean? I was totally terrified, and I didn't know whether to turn it on or turn it off. Um, I called the number. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I actually had that happen about 10 years ago to me as well, and I could never get back out of my computer. I had to bring it to an actual person in Amherst and have them fix it. Yeah. Well, if, if that happens to you, if you control, off it, delete, and get out of the computer. I had it and it still wouldn't. No matter what I did, this one virus was there for good. And it was it was about ten years ago and I still had that computer in a box because I never I never wanted to turn it on again. I was terrified. Yeah, it was terrifying. Um, I've seen ads on Go, go ahead. So I've seen ads, you know, when you're on a website and you're reading articles, and then at the bottom they have all the, the promotional ads. And there's one I've seen for years about if you've never missed a mortgage payment you qualify for this special government program. Now, I've never clicked on it because I don't believe in a free lunch, but how are they even allowed to constantly put these ads out there if they're, if they're cons? Or, are, or, or is it actually no problem? I wouldn't doubt what anyone would do to make money. Yeah. There are whole communities and countries which the main industry is scamming right. throughout the world, not just us, mm -hmm. not just us. Uh, yeah. It's As we like, put it up on, on, the, uh, on that one seeking love, what, 245 men I think they had, you know, uh, more than a year or even more mm -hmm. for men and women who get stuck into this thing. Yeah. And I had, uh, we have a relative who was convinced that woman in Russia was going to be the greatest love of his life. And uh, he basically bankrupted himself. Right. And it happens even for jobs. It's not just seniors, it's anyone. You're not the only ones targeted, and it's terrifying. We had a, a young man come in. He had gotten a job off of Craigslist, and he just had to buy some gift cards and send them over, and they'd send him artwork to sell and he was younger than me and I just stood there like how did you do this and uh, it's it's easy because at that time there was a high unemployment rate it was pre-COVID um, and he was really relying on that job that he was so lucky to get um, one of them I had before I started working at the police department I was looking at jobs online as well because I disliked my old job and um, I was reading descriptions, and then all of a sudden I was like, this is the exact description of a TV show I watch. Uh, it was basically the show I watched called The Office, and the job description was like, are you a party planner? Do you enjoy you know, having fun with your coworkers? And, it, and as I read it, I was like, they're literally putting all of the information from a TV show into a job description, 
and uh, it was like, contact us. So I did not putting two and two together in the beginning. Luckily, I did not lose out any money, but I emailed them and they did the same thing. Hey, we just need to send you some gift cards. As soon as everything's all going, then we can send you stuff to sell, and then you get 50% and we get 50%. And I was like, nope. Um, and, and luckily, I never had any issues other than that. But they, hey, it sounded like a great job. <laughs> I like to have fun. I like to party plan. So they, they get you. They get anyone that they possibly can with an allure of something fun or exciting or the best love of your life. Yeah. I just have one last thing about scams. Um, the government has really made an effort to um, to require the phone companies to crack down on those robocalls and come up with technology to make you aware of it. So you might see scam on your caller ID in front of some of the calls. So there really is a big push for the landline phones, you know, any calls that you get to be really monitored and identified. And the phone companies, um, they're working on ways to crack down on this kind of thing. Just be aware, if you have a smartphone and you can get text messages on your phone, that now, because they're cracking down on the actual phone calls, they're starting to see an uptick in false text messages. My phone, I have gotten a lot of fake text messages in the past month or so. So that's just another way that they're trying to get me convinced. So I had one recently, it was an Amazon one. And I also had one that told me that my, um, I, had pro I had put something inappropriate on my Facebook page and I was blocked. And I had to click on the link to fix my Facebook page. Um, so just be aware that that's another trick that they're trying to use is send out fake text messages to try to convince people to respond and get personal information. Oh boy. <laughs> Sorry, you have one? She mentioned the Facebook. I was going to say social media is another place that they can get you. Um, through, like, I like to play games. Well, I no longer play games because for some reason I've been, uh, what is it? Uh, they Act. got it hacked. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they tell you your friends. You know, they'll, you, they'll be your friend and say, oh, guess what, did you get this? I, I got all this money, do you? You know, if I was hungry for money, then yeah, you know, I would try my best. I'm like, I don't care about that. That's great that you got the money. And then they keep going to try to, to push you to, um, you know, follow their way of getting in there to get some money and all they want to do is take you for a ride. Yeah. So don't, don't fall into that. Yeah. Uh, I had a, a computer experience some years back. I was selling the furniture uh, out of my parents' condo. And uh, somebody responded and said, oh, they were very interested and blah, blah, blah. Uh, next thing you know, they sent a check for double what was being asked for. And then I could keep uh, some of it, get what this particular was and send the balance back to them. Okay, I know what this is, and I just forgot about it. Well, shortly thereafter, I got an email threatening. So I marched it down to the police department, and that was the end of that. Yeah. But what, what, one, <clears throat> excuse me, one interesting thing was the mailer that this check came in, the envelope, was from um, one of the state colleges out in California. I can't remember which one off hand. But how, they obviously got into that, too. Yeah, I mean, using computers, they can make anything look, look like, like it is. Yeah. You can easily steal that Amazon logo and plunk it into your computer. So, yeah, it's their. Yeah, people, <laughs> they try anything to try to convince you it's real. Yeah, we, Officer Seitz left, uh, she wanted to say goodbye, but we have, unfortunately, uh, another meeting we're preparing for for the town at 4 o'clock over at the library. 
Um, but we will definitely have uh, multiple officers here next time for more of a coffee with a cop. Um, I know we kind of ran into a full scam day, but I think it's great um, to go a little longer with that versus uh, some more actual police questions. But um, if anyone has questions at any time, you can always call the station as well, whether it's in regards to a normal uh, everyday question you have or in regards to a scam matter. Um, it doesn't have to be something you feel silly or weird about. You can call us at any time and be like, hey, there's someone in our neighborhood that doesn't belong here. Hey, there's a weird car in our neighborhood that was parked overnight. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, you can call. Uh, we will always come and check it out. We want everyone to be safe all the time. You know, if you see something, say something. If you come across a scam that you Feel we didn't touch on today and it might help other people you can let us know a lot of the times we work with the district attorney's office and then we come up with something we can post online um, I know not everyone does do social media which is um, great for you guys if you don't and unfortunate at the same time um, but we also always have pamphlets and handouts available here um, we work very closely with the senior center as well um, and send them information whenever we have it too um, we also have a triad uh, team, which meets quarterly, I believe. Do when do we meet? Is it monthly? Once a month. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. I do triad uh, also. I love it. It's great. Um, it's for any of the seniors in town who want to join, you can. We're always looking for new faces. We meet once a month. And... Um, it's during the day and we go over all this kind of information and more. Um, so if it's something that you feel like you really want to learn more about and you want to be more proactive about and something that you can talk to other people about and know uh, more information, you can always come and join that. They will have information at the desk as well for that. And it's a great program. Um, and we have actually our 30th anniversary coming up for that this summer. So it's a great program put on by the Sheriff's Department, the DA's office, as well as the local police and fire departments. And we welcome you to come over to our table, check out any information. There are a lot of brochures over there, bags. Um, my business cards are over there too, in case you want to uh, check those out and give me a call. Thank you.